it's time for March favourites and shall I tell you what probably my favourite favourite of the month of March is. It's the fact that it is three o'clock whilst I'm filming this video. I'm just using it with natural light on me. I've got some lights on the background but that's it. And it's still bright. Thank you. I am so happy. Spring is coming through and it's seriously awesome but you might notice that I don't have any makeup on my face right now. I probably should have brushed through my brows before I press film but whatever I didn't because when I was writing my list for my March favourites this month basically everything was a beauty favourite so I thought why not turn this into a bit of a March favourites slash tutorial throwing on my face as we go so it's kind of like chatty relaxed get ready with me but also March favourites so the bits that I show you on camera are going to be the bits that I'm completely loving I feel like I've kind of talked through all my lifestyle favourites and my style favourites on my blog so I'll link that down below for you there make sure you check that out because there's loads of stuff going on there speaking of which today's video is about five personal highlights from the last month with a bit of style kind of thrown in so just check that out that's got kind of everything else you need to know but this video is going to be a hundred percent beauty so let's get started so my first favorite of the month which I'm not actually going to put on because I've already got it on and I don't need any more on my face it is this it is the Helio Care Advanced Gel SPF 50 I'm going to write a blog post coming up very soon all about my current skincare routine because I went to see a dermatologist, she was awesome, my skincare routine now consists of like three things in the morning and then three or four things in the afternoon, afternoon, <laughs> the evening <laughs> and the majority of it is from the drugstore and it's just working really well, I haven't got anything on my skin right now and I don't have any spots which just hasn't happened for a really long time, I've got a bit of scarring there and that is it, I'm really really happy with it, I've been doing it for about a month and a half now but I think around two month mark there will be a blog post. This is one of the things that she recommended because basically she did a little assessment of my skin and the UV damage to my skin is like off the charts in a bad way so I'm gonna have to wear SPF like every day for the rest of my life and trust me after seeing those like horrifying photos they take of you I will and this is great she recommended this it's got like a little tint to it but it's nothing that comes out on the skin at all so I feel like this would work for all skin tones and it honestly feels so much just like a moisturiser. It's up there with the La Roche-Posay ones, it's up there with the Kiehl's ones. I have a feeling this is around £19. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to get hold of. If anyone knows a reputable seller where you can get this do let me know so I can link it up in the description box down below. But I just really like it and when I've been telling everyone about my whole like dermatologist experience and how my UV damage is really really bad and showing them the awful photo and people are like ooh wearing SPF every day sounds disgusting absolutely no way. I show them this they try it on the back of their hand they're like okay that is awesome so if like me you, you're into SPF and you want to be wearing it every day use this it feels no different to just using a normal moisturizer now the next thing that I'm going to talk about will be no surprise if you saw my blog post that went live on Monday because it was all about this and it is the Giorgio Armani power fabric long wear high cover foundation and I use this in the shade number four I think this foundation is just absolutely awesome. I think I use this in my high end, low end, like where to spend and where to save your money when it comes to beauty video. I actually really like it mixed with some of the Becca First Light Priming Filter. I just think that adds a bit of hydration to things and at the moment my skincare routine is really really good and it's agreeing with me but it doesn't leave my skin super super hydrated so I like to kind of amp it up a bit. But I just feel like the colour match of this is really good. I feel like it evens out my skin without looking heavy. I feel like you can work it up to a really, really full coverage, which because I have quite red cheeks, especially when I get like embarrassed or like emotional, AKA this is why it's good for like a bridal makeup. I think it would be really good for like a big special occasion because it lasts really well on the skin and it kind of covers those up. But for every day, I like it mixed with this just to shear it out a little bit and add a bit of glow. So I've just finished off with my base with lots of old favourites that you've seen a million and one times before but I will make sure that everything is mentioned down below that I've used off camera so if you were interested in the finished look even though it looks like everything else that I always do on my channel it will be down below. And then another favourite which I have mentioned again a million and one times before but I feel like I really need to mention this because it's basically one of the only eyeshadows that I've been using over like the last three or four months and I've hit pan which is always very very exciting when you hit pan. I've also hit pan on the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Press in Moonstone, I'm over the moon about it. But this is MAC Sober Eyeshadow and for me there's just nothing else that does that sort of 
when you want to wear eyeshadow but you don't want it to look really super overdone, hasn't got shimmer in it but it's not super matte and like chalky on the eyes. It just looks very relaxed, very natural on the eyes and that's exactly why I like it. Also so easy to apply, I just put it on a MAC 217 brush and sort of dust it all over. Like back in the day, I never wore eyeshadow. Like who remembers those days? I hated eyeshadow. I was all about loads and loads and loads of mascara. But now I actually quite like eyeshadow. I think it makes me look older when I don't wear it. So I, uh, I definitely do wear it these days. And it just makes getting ready so easy when you've got this sort of uniform down that you can just crack out and know that you like the end result. You can be ready in five minutes. Although I'm sure Mark would uh, protest that. So, for my mascara, I've gone back to another old favourite, and it is the Fairy Drops Scandal Queen Mascara. Who remembers this? Back when I was first in love with it, you just couldn't get it in the UK at all, and you had to get it on Amazon and dodgy eBay sites. Now it's available everywhere. It's available on ASOS. It's available on Cult Beauty. It's awesome that it's so readily available now, and I love that. But I just still think this is a great, great mascara. I've been having a bit of eyelash trouble recently. The last lash lift that I had, that's really hard to say, has sort of worn off, but there's still some random, really super curly eyelashes left. And so it's trying to kind of even them all out. I've been using the Surratt Eyelash Curler, which I also mentioned in that where to spend your money and where to save it video. But I have sort of managed to find a way to even them all out using the combination of the two. This lasts all day doesn't go weird under my eyes and really smudgy and it kind of adds volume and length and separation and everything that I like in a mascara. You can make them quite clumpy if you want but you can also really separate it out depending on how you sort of position the brush. The final step in all of this is some kind of lip colour and I know last month I went on about the hourglass lip, not stylo, like I was saying you guys were like, honey it's called stylo. Stilo. Sounds much fancier. The one in the shade Futurist is so good. I really like it. It's down to a little nub now. I've been using that a ton. But I've also rediscovered this. This is the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in the shade Stockholm. I was clearing my lip creams out. I did liquid lipsticks. I was super into them at one point, but I just find that now my lips are too dry to kind of pull them off. However, this is a really lovely, very moussey, very light formula that actually just feels like an extremely matte lipstick. And so I like this one, and I just think the colour works really well with the eyeshadow, and it just adds a little peachiness to things, which is quite springy. I don't really apply a thick layer, I kind of apply it to my bottom lip, do a bit of smushing, and then I don't apply it, I don't like double dip back in. I just sort of wipe it over the top lip. Why am I trying to talk and do this at the same time? But there you go, this way I get more of a stain on the lips. I find that it lasts a really long time. And yeah, I couldn't say enough good things about Stockholm. I think this is a really good nude kind of peachy pink color. So there are three other things which I can't directly show you and demonstrate, but they are awesome and I need to tell you about them. And the first one is this. This is the San Jopay Gradual Tan Plus Sculpt and Glow. Now I haven't used a gradual tanner in years. I haven't really tanned in a really long time. I just kind of can't really be bothered with it. Mark hates it. It gets all over the sheets. I smell funny when I do it. It kind of is a bit grim. But when I got back from Thailand, I had a bit of tan going on. Kind of wanted to prolong that. And this was awesome for it. It is basically just a body moisturizer that has, you know, gradual tanning. You know how these things work. But I found that this one was really light on the skin and so it absorbed really easily. I didn't feel like really slippery and weird after I put it on. I could kind of dress straight away and basically forgot that I was even fake tanning. It just felt like putting on a body moisturizer. And then Mark was like snuggling up to me one night and he was like, oh, you smell so good. I had used this, I had used this. And he said that I smelled good, which never happens. He's the first one to tell me when I smell like biscuits, when I smell like chicken. And so I just kind of smugly like smiled and was like, thanks. He had no idea that I was even tanning. So for the fact that this doesn't smell really, really grim, there's still a slight scent there. I mean, Mark obviously picked up on something, but it's not as horrendous or as chickeny as ones I've used in the past. And for the fact that it absorbs into the skin and doesn't leave you feeling all greasy and gross, this one is a winner for me. I also have a candle favourite because I've been so into candles this month. I just find them really relaxing. Like, who doesn't love a candle? They're also really fancy for when people come over. And if you want to look like you really have your shit together, put a candle on. The place smells incredible. Smells like you just cleaned. And you've got a candle on. Like, you look like you are 
adulting real good. <laughs> so I really like this one. This is from a brand called Sense of Home Melbourne obviously an Australian brand. These are sold in one of my favourite places in Brighton. I'm actually doing a blog post about it that's coming up next week. Um, a place called Workshop. I'm there all the time. Me and Lily always go whenever she comes down. It's a really awesome shop. The guys who run it are just really lovely guys and it always feels like you're going back in to see friends anytime you go there. They stock them there but they also have them on just their own website. They are awesome, they do different ones in like different tubs, they do kind of a clear one, they do copper, they do this brassy colour and then they also do kind of a cast iron black. This one is my favourite because obviously it just goes with, you know, the scheme, this like brassy gold, I love it. And this is in the scent called Collins Street which is apparently a very popular street in Melbourne, Melbourneers, have you heard of it? And it smells so good, Mark loves the scent of this one as well, it's quite... It's quite springy, so you know, there's a real spring vibe going on with this March Favourites. But it smells kind of mandarin, zingy, quite citrusy. Just really fresh, but kind of warm and fresh. I'm terrible at describing scents, but I really, really, oh, that's my dad. But I really, really love these candles. I have a feeling that the wax they use is better for the environment, so that's always a good thing. And they're one of those candles that sort of throws scent across the room, even when they're not on and burning, which is always a good thing for me. Oh yeah, and then the final thing, you might have seen me talk about this at the, like near the beginning of the month on Instagram stories, I went and got a gel polish, a CND gel manicure at Dry Bar in London and it is still going strong. We're about like three weeks later right now and yeah, it's grown out quite a bit but Honestly, the colour is still there, it hasn't chipped, aside from growing out and looking a bit grim around the cuticles. I've been using lots of cuticle oil, the um, Nails Ink one, cuticle oil just to sort of strengthen those up a bit so they don't look so raggedy and gross. But honestly, it's lasted so well. And because I had it done in this colour, which is like a sort of Nails Ink poor chesty square colour, let me find out the colour for you. Field Fox by CND, that's what it was called. Because I got it done in this colour, it sort of hasn't really shown if there has been any wear and tear at the top. I did have to cut them down after about a week or two because I felt like I had talons and I didn't like it at all. But the colour is still there, it's still going strong and I can't really be bothered to take it off. So super, super impressed, I'd definitely recommend um, Dry By in London. I've been there a couple of times, I've never had gel done, I normally just have the normal ones done there, nor polish, and they last like about a week as well. But yeah, gel polish, three weeks, still going strong. Kind of grim, kind of good. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this 100% beauty edition. I think if this ever happens again in the future, I'll do the same thing and like do a mini tutorial. It wasn't really a tutorial, was it? But at least I showed you them <laughs> on my face. Hopefully that was helpful. But thank you so much for watching. I'll be back on Sunday with a very highly requested video. Might have something to do with the capsule wardrobe. Very excited to film that and get that out for you. And then I'll link two videos here. Also my February favourites. If you didn't see that, definitely check it out because that had a couple of more style bits in as well and I'll link another semi-related video here. But thank you for watching. Definitely check out the blog post as well and I'll see you soon with a brand new video. Bye!